there is another question from Muhammad Akhtar Khan from London, UK. I have noticed that most of the English Dawa talks organized by Muslims in the Western world and other parts have an entry ticket. But all your talks throughout the world, including the ones with very large audiences, never have an entry ticket. According to you, is it better to charge an entry fee which will help in covering the expenses of the program or better keep it free? This is a very important question asked by Mohammed Khan from London, UK. And since I come from India, when I started Dawa after Mindy Sheikh Ahmed Didad and started the organization in 1991, at that time in India, in the eastern part of the world, charging ticket for any Islamic lecture was unheard of. The first time I went out on a foreign trip for giving lectures, of course, in 1994 I went to Mindy Sheikh Didad and 95 in Jeddah, but in 96, when I started going to the Western world, I'd go to Canada in 1996, and I was shocked that they were charging $5. They were charging $10 per ticket. And I'd gone on a lecture tour with other Duaks. And then I had a lecture tour of UK in the 90s and other parts of the Western world. And I was shocked that they were charging entry ticket of $5, $10, $15, $20, depending upon the event. And I was not comfortable with it. So much so that after a few years, maybe in 2002, 2003, maybe 20 years ago, I made it a policy that anyone who invited me for a talk, I have to mention that while accepting the invitation, number one, I will bear my own, I will bear the cost of my own a ticket. I will take care of my hotel accommodation. You only arrange for me my visa and you will not charge any entry fee for my talks. And I kept this policy. Maybe I'm doing it since the last, I think, 20 years, 2003, 2004. And when I attended conferences, I attended the GPO conference in London, I think it was the 2005, and that kept the lowest ticket was, about, I think, about 40 pounds, and they get 50 pounds, 100 pounds. And if sitting next to me, they used to charge 200 pounds in the front row. 200 pounds in 2005, exorbitant. <coughs> but naturally, while going to a conference, there are many speakers, 10 speakers, 15 speakers, and you know, you cannot put conditions. Then I went to this conference in Canada in 2001, 2003, I think I attended twice or thrice. Even they used to charge entry ticket. And that time I could not tell people that, you know, you're having a conference and there are 30, 40 speakers, or not 30, there are 15 speakers, 10 speakers, 8 speakers, and there were expenses. And also the last conference I remember I attended was the Journey of Faith in 2009. And then in 2010 I said that, inshallah, we should see to it that we break this trend. And we started having conferences in Bombay. The first conference we had in Bombay was in 2007. And I used to always admire, you know, the technology used by the Grammy Award, by the Oscar Award, the stage they used to have, the lighting they used to add. Haram! But the technology was great. It was impressive. So it was my desire at least to have one conference on a very high level, at least once in my lifetime. So, mashallah, we invested something in the Islamic stocks and Alhamdulillah we made a great profit. So we had in 2007 the first Islamic conference organized by the, our organization, Islamic Research Foundation called the Peace, Con Peace Conference, Peace, the Solution of Humanity. And at that time we called 20 speakers from different parts of the world. And Every year we start having the conference in 27, 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. For five years we had. Once in English, then 2007 was in English, 2008 was in Urdu, 2009 was in English. In 2009, we called 30 English speakers from about 15 to 18 different countries. And majority were from the Western world. And mashallah, over 10 days, there's a million people who attended it. 
and we saw to it that we did not keep any ticket for it. And this conference, in terms of expense, people always tell me, you know, you know, why if you're having conference, then the expenditure is there, we have to pay for tickets of five speaker, ten speaker, and ticket is expensive, and then hotel accommodation, so it costs money, and I'm, yes, the expense is there. But we always believed that if you keep it free, the audience will be bigger. So the conference that I attended in GPU, it was about 25,000 people in, in one sitting for two days. So if you add up both, maybe maximum 50,000 people. I attended the risk conference again. Initially, the first year was less, three, 4,000, it increased. I attended the next one, 15,000 on a one. It was for two days or three days. All put together, again, less than 50,000. Mashallah, here in 2009, we had a conference where the seating capacity in the last day was 250,000 in one sitting. And of all the 10 days, more than a million people attended. And the cost of the conference, I know that ICNA and ISNA, when they have the conference, ICNA is in USA, the largest conference. I'm talking about all about a few years back, that is before the COVID, up to 2015, 16. Maximum they used to spend was $500,000. That's half a million dollars. I remember risk conference maybe 800,000 US dollars. Now maybe a little bit more. But come the US dollars, somewhere close to that. Our conference in India, what we had in 2009, we spent $5 million. Ten times more than the second largest conference in the world. And it was absolutely free. There was no entry ticket. What you have to realize is that the Muslim Ummah is not that bad. There are surely people, if you give quality, you surely have donors who will come and support the cause. And though it was the most expensive conference in the world, where we spent $5 million, it was the cheapest in terms of cost effectiveness per person. Number one, when we did this conference, the main aim was so that the recording was of high quality. And majority of the cost was in, in recording. So when we did this conference, we used to have the conference from morning 10 till evening 10. 12 hours, taking, our, taking the breaks away, at least 9 hours of recording. 9 hours of every day. So we used to start on a Friday and ended after 10 days on the next Sunday. And we thought to it that we called the Imams of the Haram. So we had Imam of Masjid Nabi, first we had the Sheikh Muhammad Ayyub, then Sheikh Salah Budir came. Then Sheikh Saud Shurem came. And we had, mashallah, every year when we had the conference, we had two Imams. One from Masjid Nabi, one from Makkah. At one time, we even had from Masjid Aqsa. So we had the best of Qurras coming from all over the world. We didn't charge anything. And imagine a million people coming. Even live attendance, if you count, if we spend $5 million and 1 million people are attending it. So for, per person is $5 very cheap. But you fail to realize that on our satellite channel, there were 100 million people watching live. So people attending a million people, so $5 per person is very cheap. But the cost of the conference was including what we used to do outside the conference, where we had eight studios where we used to record, we used to see to it that we make the best benefit of these people coming in the conference. So when 30 speakers come, that speaker comes on the stage over 10 days, maybe twice or thrice. The balance time, he's giving TV talks, they're having group discussion, they're having workshop. We're benefiting from the speaker. So simultaneously, we have eight studios doing the recording. So much so that we used to record for thousands of hours for our Peace TV. So the live telecast was there for 100 million and we used to record more than a thousand hours of the field in the studio, in eight studios, was phenomenal. So per person watching was just a couple of cents. 100 million people watching live and $5 million spent is 20 cent per person. But 100 million, not one day, it's over 10 days. So per day, per person watching is less than a cent. So the volume and the reach was phenomenal. And I always believe that, imagine, if our Sahabas started charging 
for the talks they gave, for the dawah they gave, would Islam would have reached us? Yeah, the answer is no. So I believe that dawah should always be free. I am not saying charging is haram, but I wouldn't say it is recommended. And always, since the last 20 years, even for conferences, even today, anyone who calls me, my condition is you cannot charge. And that's the reason, mashallah, Allah has given more barakah. Even the conferences I attended now, what I attend now, all the conferences I attend, I do not allow anyone to charge. And even for my son, recently someone in Malaysia called my son, one of the universities, and they put a ticket of 10 ringgit. So my, I told my son, tell them, and they refunded the money back. Because charging per se is not haram, but I wouldn't think it is mustahab. So I personally feel that if you keep dawah free, it will benefit the ummah more. And what has happened now recently, in the last few years, it has become more of a business. The organizers, they organize the conference, they call the speakers, and it is even the fault of the dais that nowadays in the Western world, it has become a trend that most of the dais, they want a remuneration. They want money every time they come. If you don't give them a thousand dollar or two thousand dollar or some amount, they will not come. Many of the dais in the Western world, they ask, how much will you pay me? So only if you fulfill the requirement, they'll come, otherwise they will not come. This is an unfortunate part. Alhamdulillah, yet, if you find the dais in the other part of the world, they don't demand, mashallah. But naturally, when the organizers, when they call and if the dai comes, it is good to give them some honorarium, no problem. But a dai should not demand. Nowadays, I demand, I want a business class, I take it. And now, unfortunately, most of the famous dais, you have to give them business class ticket. And you, they, you have to give them in a five-star hotel. So the expenses goes high. For me, mashallah, I always travel economic class. And whoever calls me, unless if it's the government who calls me at that time, I do not force that I will pay my ticket because I don't want to cross swords with the government. So suppose the government has called me, you know, I'm a, I'm a guest of the government. So at that time, I don't, I don't, I don't force and say. Anyway, I remember that one, a very big prince from Saudi Arabia called me, but he was not from the government. I said, you have called me, I will come. They said, okay, we are booking your first class ticket. We are booking in the best hotel, Ritz Carlton. I said, sorry. I will come myself, I will book my ticket. I told you I will give you five hours, I will come to your palace for five hours and give the talk. So the thing is there that I maintain that policy and even now, never ever do we charge. Maybe hotel accommodation, suppose the organizers have got complimentary from the host, etc. That is a different question. But you see to it that we always book our own ticket and I always travel in economic. Not that I cannot afford business class. Allah has blessed me, Alhamdulillah. We can travel in business class, in first class, but I prefer spending that much money for the cause of dawah. Who wouldn't like the luxury of a business class or a, or a first class? But the more we sacrifice, Allah gives you more. So as a policy, from the last maybe 18 to 20 years, we have seen to it that we don't allow our organizers to charge any, any ticket for the. And I feel that most of the dai should do the same. Yes, there are some guys who don't charge, but the organizers call them and they make money because of them. That's a different thing. But they don't put their foot down. But I, as a policy, I put my foot down. If you want me, you cannot charge. And then I tell them, as far as the expenses is concerned, you can very well ask any donor, any Muslim donor, for donation, no problem. Then since the last 15 years, I've told anyone, if the organization is small, and there are times where a very small organization called me. So I have to tell them, you informed your Muslim brothers in your city that are calling Dr. Zakir and I can collect donation. And whatever shortfall is there, I will give you. And there have been so many occasions. There are organizers in Hyderabad, the budget was 5,000 rupees. That is 5,000 rupees is less than $100 a month. And they collected, mashallah, 20 lakh rupees at that time when they asked for donation. Imagine their budget per year is 50,000. They collected what is their budget for 40 years 
what is the 40 years budget they collected for one event of mine alhamdulillah i remember when i'm going to korea the the youngsters i told them don't worry whatever thing any shortage i will give and i told them see we will stay in a simple hotel we'll take we'll be have our own ticket then we land and they have booked the five star hotel. what is this you said you're in a budget why are you booking five star i said no there is a muslim no no came and he said dr zakir naik is coming you have to put them in five star hotel so this is the barakah from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what we find that if you don't keep tickets the the numbers are bigger that is the reason you find that most of these conferences that you have the audience is limited yes if you have in america you have 15000 that's it why not more 15000 in one sitting the other conferences that they have maybe 3000 4000 5000 why why don't you have 100000 why don't you have 200000 why not so the thing is there that nowadays organizing lectures of dais has become a business for many organizations and they make money it's not haram i don't think i'm not saying it's haram it's better to business and get people close to allah than do other business but i feel it's preferable if you keep it free your sawab will be more you make an organization rather than a business company in that organization take donation you can take your salary for what you are what time you are giving there's no harm at all and see to it that you give more benefit for the ummah so because of this alhamdulillah this policy mashallah i personally prefer that but in india and the eastern and and the eastern part of the world you don't have all the lectures where people are charging now they have started they having workshop where people are start charging where there been bombay but previously it was unheard of so they are emulating from the western world even malaysia where i live most of the lectures are charged but alhamdulillah i am coming in malaysia since 1996 1996 till today 2023 never any event in malaysia have anyone paid a single ringgit here and i have given talks in 1996 when i used to come now it is for a few thousand then it increased in 2012 it became tens of thousand in 2016 I gave a talk in Bukit Jalil Stadium, more than fifty thousand. In two thousand nineteen, in Klantan, I gave a talk, more than hundred thousand people. Not a single ticket charged. I went to Indonesia, hundred and ten thousand people came. Mashallah. So we see to it that we tell the organizers, please don't charge any money. You can always ask the people, and if any shortfall, we'll pay. And believe me, in all these twenty years. I did not give a single dollar to any organization. Why? They always collected more than what they spent. Even in Malaysia, in Malaysia, when I came in 2016, the organizer told us it will cost us 200,000 ringgit to keep your lecture in the stadium. The stadium is given free by the government. I said, collect from the Muslims of Malaysia whatever shortfall I will give. I was prepared. Maximum they collect is zero. I will give them 200,000. Why charge? Mashallah, they collected 450,000 ringgit. Can you believe? they had 250000 ringgit excess so never ever in my life had there been a single event where the organizers collected money and they fell short for the requirement so if you follow the same policy allah subhanahu wa taala surely is going to help you and surely the muslim ummah here in the world they aren't that bad that they wouldn't want to see but unfortunately this trend has started from the western world there was sort of an organization which started charging and this has continued and it is taken precedence so i personally prefer that the dawa talks the dawa conferences the dawa event absolutely free and believe me we do bigger event the expenditure is multiple times more than all these people that charge ticket okay have an event you give your shops on rent where people sell islam because no problem that have no objection with that we won't bother also with much of those we had we had a good halal expo in bombay but that wasn't our main thing our main thing was quality and we have to have exhibition you know it was and but naturally there in bombay when we did the conference mashallah our staff was as i told you 500 we used to have 1000 employee we used to have 4000 volunteers so only a volunteer force is bigger than the audience of the conferences to handle such a large audience so allah's help is so if you do with the class if you do with the pure nia 
So that's the reason a policy is that we never charge for any of the Islamic lectures. When we go, we tell them that we will, I don't, of course, we don't expect every day to bear his own etiquette. They cannot. So it's the role, it's the duty of the organizers to, to see to it that they give them a ticket. And I always request that, that please don't demand for a business class. The cost of a business class ticket is very expensive. It is five to six times the cost of economic ticket in most parts of the world. If you can save this cost and keep the speakers in a very good hotel, no problem. I always say that, and in our, our policy was very straight. When we called the speakers, we used to give economic class ticket. If some, there were only one or two who really requested. So the answer went from my manager, Dr. Zakirnaik also travels in economic class. Finish. Not that we could not afford business class. But imagine 30 people, we are giving business class ticket. You know, a normal ticket will cost you how much? It will cost you about two, three thousand dollars. If you business class ticket, multiply by six times, twenty thousand dollars. Eighteen thousand dollars, one. Multiply by thirty people. What would be the cost? Even if you can afford, we should not encourage it. So we always have a policy. Yes, if the government calls and the government is giving you, we cannot object. So if the government calls and if they are giving you, what can we do? So we kept this policy and mashallah, Allah gave barqa, the work increased and the audience is increasing, alhamdulillah. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may most of the duas, whether in English language, Urdu, Bangla language, any other language, see to it that they maintain this policy so that the work will spread. And inshallah, we as the eyes get more sawab in this world and the akhirah.